This video is sponsored by Skillshare. It's five days before your exam. You're worried, you're nervous, you're unprepared. You spent the last few weeks procrastinating and doing all the things you weren't meant to be doing. Now here you are, mentally preparing yourself to cram. That means 10 hours of study a day, minimal sleep, and plenty of caffeine. Fast forward a few days and you feel that all the study's kind of paying off. Questions are easier, everything seems to make sense, and you go to bed telling yourself, I've got this. Now it's exam day. You open up that first page, read the question, and think to yourself, I have no idea. It's a question you haven't seen before, and you don't know what to do with it. You start getting frustrated. The lecturer never went through this. When did we ever get taught this? This exam is just, it's just not fair. This is just not a fair exam. When did we get taught this? You blame other people and other factors, but really the only person to blame is yourself. Here's why cramming doesn't work. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian, a medical student from Australia. And this might be a situation that you found yourself in. I certainly have. And in many cases, when I face difficulty in an exam, I default to putting the blame on other people or other factors. But really, I had to take responsibility for my own study. When it comes to learning, cramming isn't the answer. But what is? Before we get onto that question, let's start with what cramming is and where it fails. It's the process of trying to absorb as much information as you can in the shortest amount of time possible. And for many students, the priority is to focus on the most high yield concepts and principles and obtain enough superficial recall to get them through. But why is that problematic? Professor Robert Bjork, in his review of Learning versus Performance, writes that performance is often an unreliable index of where the long-term changes that constitute learning have taken place, and that the improvements in performance can fail to yield significant learning. Here's his thoughts on cramming. The truth is that cramming can work, but only on a test administered right after cramming. If there's something we really want to learn, we should not cram because it's followed by dramatic forgetting. So cramming is a very bad idea. We can see that the cramming process only focuses on the short term. It neglects any formation of good study habits or deep internalization of the concepts and principles in the subject that you're learning about. While it may get you a pass or even a good score for the exam, it comes at a cost. And that cost is misleading you to what you really know because all that information is stored in the short term and forgetting everything that you learn the second you walk out of the exam. Let me give you a few analogies. If you think of cramming like working out in the gym, Cramming would be the equivalent of trying to do a full body workout, doing every single muscle group you can think of from arms, chest, legs, and expecting you to get bigger from that. But when you go back and try to do another workout the next day, you're not gonna be able to. It's the same with study. You can't expect to learn everything and remember it. You can't expect to go eight hours when you haven't been studying. It's just gonna be too much effort and you're gonna lose focus. Take another analogy. Cramming is like going on a sugar high. When you consume a lot of information, it's the same as having a massive blood glucose spike when you eat a lot of junk food. Soon the insulin is gonna kick in and that sugar level is gonna come crashing down. It's the same with your study. You'll overload with all this content, but you might only remember 20% of it and the rest you'll soon forget. Cramming doesn't work for a few reasons. First, it focuses on the short term and neglects the long-term memory retention, which is important in your career and with your job prospects later on. Two, it can lead to increased stress levels and a lot of anxiety in the days leading up to the exam, which can result in burnout or it can affect your performance on the exam day. And three, it can affect your quality and amount of sleep that you're getting per night. For many students, they'll pull all-nighters or they'll pull very short sleeping schedules to make sure that they can cram as much as possible. And so if cramming doesn't work, what does? What's the opposite of cramming? And that's spacing your study over time. And that's exactly what's been shown by research to be highly effective for long-term memory retention. In a study by Nate Cornell, students were asked to study a bunch of flashcards. There was a spacing group where they studied one large stack of flashcards and a massing group who studied four stacks of cards with less spacing between study sessions. Cornell found that the spacing group performed better than the massing group, even though 72% of participants believed that massing had been more effective than spacing after the first study session. The last point highlights that many students are often misled to what study methods work for them. And just remember that if you're getting frustrated or finding it difficult, that's good because it's meant to be difficult and learning comes at a cost. A lot of the time students will just look over their notes and remember it and recognize it, but they haven't actually learned it. 
And although it may feel more comfortable to reread your notes over and over again, it's not until you test yourself and space out that repetition and constantly get exposed to it, that's when you're properly learning. Another study found that repeated retrieval with long-term intervals between each test produced a 200% improvement in longer term retention compared to repeated retrieval, but without spacing between tests. And from my personal experience, I find the brain reaches a saturation point to how much you can learn per day. If you're trying to revise 15 lectures worth of content, a lot of it's not gonna stick. And I find that a sweet spot for me is usually a maximum of five to six hours. After that, my brain's pretty fried. So I'd recommend finding out that sweet spot for you and building up your mental stamina to be able to study for long periods of time. So how can you employ space repetition? First thing is to create a study schedule that outlines what specific topics you're gonna to learn on what specific days. If I was doing some anatomy revision, I might schedule to do it on the Monday. And then I'm gonna have a look at it again on the Thursday. And then I'll have a look at it again the next Thursday. And so I'm seeing it three times over two weeks. Instead of just trying to spend one big day doing all my anatomy, I split it into three smaller sessions doing my anatomy. And in the meantime, I could also be arranging other topics or other subjects to study about. I might chuck in biochemistry or molecular biology. And that way, I'm being continually exposed to different information over a spaced amount of time. I wholeheartedly believe that it's better to study one hour a day rather than to try do a 10 hour study day. Even though it's less amount of time, you're gonna retain a lot more. And we'll get to the reason for that shortly. But what's integral to making the study plan stick is building good habits. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Most successful people have a set of habits and principles that keep them focused in their daily lives. Building good habits is the first step to prevent procrastination and stop you from needing to cram at the end of a semester. Charles Duhigg in his book, The Power of Habit, explores how at the core of every habit, there is a loop that consists of three parts, a cue, a routine, and a reward. So the first step is the cue. And to execute your habits, you want to isolate your cue. So figure out what that is. That could be laying down your notes in an obvious location so that when you sit by your desk, you're ready to learn. That could be organizing your applications on your phone or your computer so that the learning-based applications are shown to you first. Next is the routine. And in another video, I talked about finding out when you're most productive, when you're most active. For me, that's in the morning. So I'll set aside time every morning to organize my study. So that might be from nine to 12. And so my study routine before an exam now becomes that I'm gonna study from 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And the final part is the reward. So when I finish studying at 11.30, what's my reward gonna be? That could be a lunchtime snack. That could be an episode of your favorite anime or favorite Netflix show. Whatever it is, if you can follow this loop and if you can develop cues and ways to self-automate the process of studying or working, that's really gonna help you stay focused in the long term. And the final tip is to start small and then allow yourself to work up. So if you're someone who hasn't really been studying, you're coming out of holidays and you're still in that holiday mindset, then it's gonna take a while for you to build up the mental stamina to do long study sessions. So it's pointless trying to do three hours at one go. What's better is to start small. That might be setting yourself a goal to do 30 minutes of study a day, but allow yourself to go further. So you'll find that you'll do the 30 minutes, but you're kind of in the zone at this point. So you might actually do an hour or you might do two hours. But by starting off small, you're not gonna feel bad if you don't get to your crazy goal of four hours a day, but build up slowly over time. So by the end of the semester, you've improved your mental stamina and you can focus for longer periods of time. Before we move on, here's a word from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Whether you want to explore new skills or develop more effective ways to study, Skillshare offers a huge range of classes made by professionals, teachers, and other creatives. What I like about Skillshare is that their classes are organized in a logical, coherent way, and you can work through them at your own pace. I've been loving the productivity courses as they've been a great way to help me better manage my time, especially now that I'm starting third year of medical school. I recently finished Thomas Frank's course, Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last, and I really liked his approach about having external systems to keep us accountable for our habits. If this sounds interesting to you, the first 1,000 people to use my link in the description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and then after that, it's only around $10 a month. Now back to the video. Practice does not make perfect. It is practice followed by a night of sleep that leads to perfection. We all know that sleep is good for us, but for some reason, when it comes to finals, we seem to neglect it. And it may sound counterintuitive, but sometimes it's better to nap for one hour 
rather than to try keep cramming for another hour. That is exactly what was found in a study of 90 young adults. They were asked to learn detailed factual knowledge and then given either a one hour afternoon nap between learning material or one hour to cram and revise the material. What the study found was that after a week, napping maintained a significant advantage in terms of memory compared to cramming, which did not. Studies have also shown that sleep improves declarative and procedural learning. Results from three labs asked volunteers to perform three different tasks, a visual texture discrimination test, a motor sequence test, and a motor adaptation test. These studies demonstrated that there was a post-training improvement after a night's sleep compared to an equivalent time being awake. Sleep also helps with declarative learning, which is the knowledge that we're able to recall and verbalize. In one study, 40 healthy students from 10 to 14 years old were given a paired associate test where they repeated related and unrelated pairs of words. Related words could be like tree and leaf. Unrelated could be like rock and car. Two groups were formed, those who slept for 12 hours and those who didn't sleep for 12 hours. Those who slept had a 20% increase in memory recall compared to the group that didn't sleep for 12 hours. But why does sleep help with memory consolidation? The evidence is still not fully understood, but here's what Matthew Walker, author of Why We Sleep and professor of neuroscience has to say about it. What we've discovered is that there are big, powerful brainwaves that happen during the very deepest stages of sleep that have riding on top of them these spectacular bursts of electrical activity that we call sleep spindles. And it's the combined quality of these deep sleep brainwaves that acts like a file transfer mechanism at night. So now you're probably thinking, how can we improve our sleep if it's so good for us? Some quick tips that I recommend is to make sure that you're going to bed at the same time every night, turn off any blue light in the hours before you sleep, and ways I do that is to put a night light on my phone or to use the application Lux on my computer, which adds a warm light. And finally, to make sure that you're actually getting enough sleep. And for most people, this is generally around seven or eight hours. So next time you're thinking of pulling an all-nighter, think again, because sleep has profound impacts on your memory consolidation and long-term memory retention. All right, guys, I hope I've shown you some of the downsides to cramming. And even though in some cases it can work, sometimes the performance on that exam can highly mislead you to what you actually know and to whether long-term learning even took place. Space repetition, building good study habits, and getting a good night's sleep are all important ways that you can ensure long-term learning. If you enjoyed the video, remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this, and until next time, this was Sebastian, stay sharp.